Now, let's use the Lumi system in the last lesson to draw a detailed female portrait. Here are some main differences between male and female faces. Typically, male faces are characterized by stronger, more angular jaw lines and brow ridges. The chin is often more pronounced, and the overall facial structure tends to be square and more angular. Female faces, in contrast, usually have a softer, more rounded contours. The jawline is gentler, the chin is less pronounced, and the cheeks are often fuller. The overall impression is one of roundness and softness. I like my working environment nice and neat, so I can concentrate better. Now let's start. I use this 2B pencil to sketch in the initial drawing. You want to hold your pencil a little bit in the back so it's give your wrist more free drawing range. First, I'm going to draw a circle that has to be exactly round circle. Then we're going to split this in half. Then we're going to find where the model is looking. She's looking this way. We're going to find the middle nose bridge line. Okay, right here. And we drop down. And we're going to find, find the hairline. So it's half of this line. I'm going to make third and third and third right here now we're going to find where the ear is so we can slice off the sides like a slice of a orange that's how we found the mark right here Now we are going to find the jawline. It should be right here. The other side is right here. And we found the cheekbone line. That will be the cheekbone. About third away from here is the top of the cheekbone. Now we need to find the eyes and nose. That's nose. And then the mouth is probably around this part. One third. And the eye is around right here. For female, the eye line usually will be a little bit lower than the male eye line. Okay, we've had a basic structure because the model's hair covered her ear, so we don't need to worry about the ear. Now we're gonna find the hairline. And we can describe the details, detail features of the face right now. Again, you can measure the eye and the nose flare. And remember, this part is very crucial in determining a, a person's feature. So you need to know the uh, measurement. So you can use your pencil basically to measure. Once you practice many, many, many times, you can measure uh, with more accuracy.
You can always use your pencil as a measuring stick. So you can measure where all the proportion is, like where the corner of the mouth will reach up to the middle of the eye right here. And this corner of the mouth will basically reach to the um, another nostril and a little bit of eye, inner eye right here. The chin on female's face is a little bit wider and smaller and shorter than the male face. One tip to draw the eyeball is to draw a whole circle. Make sure it's round and then you can erase the top part where the eyelids cover the eyeball. Pay attention where which point is the highest point on the top eyelids. To me, it looks like right here. And right here, this eye is right here. And for the bottom eyelid, it's right here. And on this eye is right here. So make sure The line you make, the mark you make, is accurately represent your reference photo. Now you can clean up your lines and get ready for shading. Again, this uh, teeny, small, mono zero eraser is perfect for small drawings like this. Compare your reference photo with your drawing, and I think it's pretty accurate right now, so I'm gonna start to shading now. First, you use 2B pencil or HB pencil, shade lightly. With a hatching and a cross and hatching, you can shade very lightly for the first layer. And don't forget to sharpen your pencil with the sandpaper. I wanted to mention that um, the ball at the beginning of this course we drew and uh, talking about a cast shadow, core shadow. So imagine this is a ball shape and this part, the dark part, will be the cast shadow. And then you're going to have a shadow right here. So drawing a ball is very useful for learning all kinds of drawing objects. I'm pretty happy with the first layer of drawing and I think it's a pretty accurate to represent uh, this reference photo. So I'm going to do a second layer of drawing. Just add more dark tone to the dark part. For the uh, mouth, just remember it's always to have a bow shaped uh, line around here. And then the lower part of the mouth usually is thicker than the top part of the lips right here now i'm using a 6b pencil to add the darker values to the hair and the other places the shadow Look how easily 
6B pencil can add darker values quicker than the 2B pencil we just used. Another tip about drawing eyebrows is don't draw the eyebrows like a straight line. Use a little hatching uh, stroke. Follow where the eyebrows, natural hair, the direction the natural hair grows, and draw the eyebrow like this. Now, when you draw the nostril, the nose and the nostril, just imagine this is a bow shape. It's not flat right here. And you can um, describe this bow shape with your pencil marks. As you can see, I basically move around the whole picture to uh, draw different places. This way I can make sure uh, I don't spend too much time on one little feature or subject then end up uh, doesn't match the whole drawing. So we always wanted to move around. The point is to see the drawing as a whole. When you draw the eyeball, remember, there are always gonna be a highlight hit directly on the eye and then travel through and have the, a reflected light coming out of here on the opposite side. So one side of the iris always have the highlight and then the other side have the reflected light. Then uh, you're going to have a darker circle uh, outside on the eyeball again, like this. If you wanted to smooth out your drawing, you can always use a paper stump lightly. Rub over your drawing. You can use a little Mono Zero eraser to make the highlight. At this drawing stage, you should stop and check your drawing the value against your reference photo. Find out where the dark dark is and where the lightest light is. So to me, the dark dark on the model is her hair, especially here, where her chin against the hair. And then you check if your drawing is correct. And the, her uh, lightest light part is where the light directly hit her nose bridge. And then you check if your drawing is correct as well. So remember squinting your eyes often and check your values often. I also wanted to talk about reflected light. So as you remember when we draw the ball, reflected light is a light bounce off the environment and reflect on the object. Here on the model's face, the reflected light should be around this area. Like, can you see the uh, value is a little bit lighter here? Then the core shadow right here. Uh, just remember when you draw the reflected light, never make it lighter than where the lighter part will be. So just pay attention and this is a reflected light. This is a core cool shadow right here. And the reflected, reflected light will never be lighter than the light part. Last, I'm gonna use AB pencil to draw the dark part 
of the uh, model's face. Do you know one of the uh, function this kind of small eraser can do is to make highlights. So we're going to make some highlights for um, hair. Where the eye? That is. We're gonna leave the eyelashes and a very small detail to the last. So, here we go. I went over the whole drawing once more with a mechanic pencil to fill in the shadow parts. So far, I spent about two hours on this drawing. When you finish drawing, don't forget to cover it with the fixative spray to protect your drawing. Do this outside and wait about 15 to 20 minutes before you return the drawing to your studio. That's it! Now you have a clear understanding of how to use the Loomis drawing system for drawing a head, as well as how to use hatching and cross hatching to draw light and shadow, and how to judge your values. Go ahead and practice what you learned, and you will see great improvement soon. I hope you enjoyed this three-weekend drawing course. Again, I strongly believe that no one should spend more than $1,000 on their art education in this digital age. That's why I created this three-weekend art series. Check out my next course for oil painters, three-weekend oil portrait painting masterclass. Last, don't forget to join my online community. I will always be here to cheer you on and I cannot wait to see what you create. Bye for now.